If you're over 50, there are a few simple movement habits you can incorporate that can make a huge difference in how you feel and how you move through life as you get older. These three movements I'm going to show you today target key areas of the body. And if you do them every single day, they can improve your mobility and may even be able to prevent some health issues down the road. My name is Micah Horn. I'm a yoga therapist and the founder of Lifelong Yoga Online. So let's get right into it. Three essential daily movement habits for healthy and vibrant aging. For our first daily movement habit, I'm going to encourage you to move your spine. There's a quote you might have heard before that says, you're only as young as your spine is flexible. And while that might be a little oversimplified, I do agree with it in that as much as we can, we want to move our spine in all its different ways it can move, all its different directions. But if you just have a short amount of time, then we really want to focus on something called extension, specifically thoracic extension. And I'm going to show you a yoga posture for this in just a minute. When we spend a lot of time sitting or working on our computers or gardening or knitting or looking down at our phones, then we're in this slouched, slumped forward, forward head position, and our mid-back is usually rounded. This is called flexion. And too much of this posture, this flexion over time, can lead to all sorts of issues in the body, neck pain, shoulder pain, low back pain, even cause issues with your balance. So we want to counteract that rounding so we don't lose the ability to extend and find space in our spine. So how do we do that? This is a variation of a yoga pose called supported fish. And all you need for this pose is a blanket, a rolled up blanket. Now there's another version of this posture, supported fish, that uses blocks instead of a blanket, yoga blocks. And if you'd like to see me demonstrate that version of the pose, then I do have another video you can look at. So you can click that link right there and check that out, give it a try. But I know most of us might just have a blanket around the house. So go ahead and roll up a blanket. And then this blanket will go under our shoulder blades. So like the mid upper back area. And I like to put something um, under my head as well for support. So you're gonna lie down on your back and it might take a little finagling, a little adjustment to get this in the right spot. But you basically just want it right under your shoulders so that your shoulders can hang open, palms open. And there's like this little lift in the mid back. So right under the shoulder blades. Now, if you have any kind of low back discomfort, it might feel better to leave your knees bent and feet planted. Or see how it feels to stretch your legs out long. So this is a very gentle, light version of supported fish. The version using blocks is a little more intense. If you do want a little more sensation, you can try that. But for most people, this will be just right. Check in that the back of your neck is long, so our chin's not sticking up into the sky. And then take your arms. Like I said, the palms are open, but the arms can be stretched out or down by your sides. See what feels good. Settle in here and take a few slow, deep breaths, releasing any tension from your body. Now, I recommend just relaxing here for about five minutes, focusing on your breath in and out of your nose. And then if you wanna add a little extra movement to this, it can feel really nice to stretch your arms up past your ears, hang out here for a moment, take a big breath in, bring your arms back down. And let's do that a couple of times. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, back down. And then one last time, inhale, stretch up. Extend through your fingertips and exhale, arms down. So that is supported fish. Now our second essential movement habit that I encourage you to do daily is the single leg balance. Practicing this single leg balance will help us prevent falls, it will build lower body strength and help develop body awareness, all very important as we age. And honestly, so easy to incorporate into your day. 
I even have clients who stand on one leg while they are brushing their teeth. This is called habit stacking, where you're taking something you already do every day, something you don't really have to think about, it's already a habit in your life, and then you tack on something else that you're trying to incorporate. So you're stacking the habits. And this way it's easier to develop that new habit. It's easier to remember to do it every day. For this one, I recommend standing near a chair, a wall, a kitchen counter, some kind of support in case you need it or want it. And this is very simple, the single leg balance. Lift one knee up and see how long you can balance. In yoga, we call this one-legged mountain or one-legged tadasana. So just go ahead and give it a shot if you're doing this with me. And you might want to start off with your support and then lighten up your grip on whatever that support is. And then maybe take your hands to your heart or take your hands to your waist as you practice your balance and see how long you can hold without putting your foot down. And don't worry, wobbling is absolutely normal and okay. I actually think wobbling is a great thing because it's our body developing that strength, developing that body awareness to hold us upright. So make sure you do it on both legs, standing up really nice and tall, making sure we're not leaning forward to that support, not any kind of hunching, just really pressing out of the floor. And then some kind of connection with your hands to your body. And then the most important thing is breathe. People tend to really hold their breath when they're trying to balance. So keep that breath flowing, find a little ease. Now, if you would like to see how your balance on one leg compares to others in your age group, and also check to see if you're at risk for a fall, then sign up at the link down in the description and I'll send you my test your balance kit. It includes me walking you through a really simple balance assessment, and it has a chart, a normative values chart, which is that age group comparison. And it also includes a balance tracker. So you can log your times as you continue to work on your balance and see your progress over time. The third and final daily movement habit for healthy and vibrant aging is to practice getting up and down off the floor every single day. Even if you don't think you need this yet, every single day practice getting up and down off the ground. This will improve your mobility, your flexibility, it will build strength, and most importantly, it will keep you independent. Independence as we get older is everything. If you want to continue to do whatever it is that you love doing for as long as possible, hiking, golfing, pickleball, playing with your grandchildren, whatever it is, then this is incredibly important and you'll have more confidence in movement in these activities. I like using low lunges to work on getting up and down because there are lots of different ways to modify for different things going on in our body and even ways to progress to maybe add a little more strength challenge, strength building if we're at that point. So grab a sturdy chair and stand really close to the chair and you might want a blanket behind you to go under your knee. That's up to you. We'll hinge from the hips and put our hands on the sides of the chair and then just step the left foot way back to a low lunge. So you're in this lunge position and then slowly drop the knee down to the floor and maybe you have some support under there. Now, if you don't like to put a lot of pressure on your knee for any reason, knee replacement, joint discomfort, whatever, actually this variation is great and it will build a lot of strength. So keep the back knee lifted, keep this front knee directly over the ankle, try not to let it go too far past the ankle. And I want you to really root through the right heel, especially as you just dip the back knee down, kind of lift the chest a little bit and then straighten the back leg, lift it back up. Keep moving like that and just practice shifting most of the work to this right leg. That's why I want you to back off the bend in the knee a little bit and really root through the heel to try to get the right glute, the muscles around the hips to turn on. Woo! <laughs> and if you really do this with intention, you will feel it. This is a great way to build strength. But then otherwise, we can drop that knee down. You can always practice coming to hands and knees and then stepping the other leg up, tucking the back toe, 
lifting the knee. Again, maybe we add those knee hovers or maybe we don't. Even if you can put your knee down on the floor easily, these knee hovers are fun to add in. My idea of fun anyway. And then maybe we drop that knee down, come down to hands and knees. So this is just a great way. And you can see how you can modify and change it up depending on how you're feeling. But the important thing is that we're practicing getting up and down off the floor. Now, if this is just not working for you at all, and you don't feel comfortable getting down on the floor right now, that is okay. We're all in different places, right? And what I would recommend for you in that case is to start seated in a chair. Go ahead and show you this. Feet about hip distance apart and pretty in close to you. Let's rest our hands on our lap and then just shift all your weight forward slowly with control. Stand up and then slowly with control, sit back down. It's important to move slowly and strongly and not use momentum getting up and down off the chair. If you want to make this a little more challenging, you can bring your feet in to touch. That challenges your balance more. Or you can even do tightrope style with one foot in front of the other. Ooh. So you can have fun exploring that and build up that lower body strength that will eventually help you feel more comfortable getting up and down. Okay, so those are the three essential movements you should be doing every single day for healthy aging so you can feel good and keep doing what you love for as long as possible. Quick recap. Habit one, move your spine, especially spending a little time every day in this what's called thoracic extension, this length and opening of the spine. Habit number two, practice the single leg balance. And finally, habit number three, practice getting up and down off the floor every single day. And remember, if you wanna try the free balance test and see how your balance compares with others in your age group and check to see if you might be at risk for a fall, then sign up at the link down in the description and I will send that right your way. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time.